Oh, I gotta get it. And one thing you gotta understand, Gene, this should hang in your cabin or house or wherever. I'll put what it in my the, lake home. Yeah, that too. What the artist said, I said I need an artist rendition of a fire extinguisher. And he said, you want me to paint a fire extinguisher? And I said, yes. So that's what he did. <laughs> I guess you gotta really work on communication skills. There you go. <laughs> so, that's how I usually leave them. You notice that the fire extinguisher is painted the same color as the wall. Yes. So, so I don't know if that's fine. Yeah, thank you. And it cost me two bucks. Yeah, two? <laughs> Exciting. So now, what we want to do, Gene, I know that everybody here that's worked with you has really enjoyed working with you. Um, you're one of the good guys. And we're going to thank you. you. And so now it's your turn to get up here and talk to us. Well, uh, Thirty-seven years. Holy, holy! Uh, let's see. Uh, <coughs> oh no, he's got a script. Oh, oh, oh. It's the only time he's ever been organized. Now, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> That's been thirty-seven years. You're not on your road, Gene. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's see what I got here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. <coughs> I guess it has been 37 years. Oh, yeah. Take this job. Oh, wait. Hi-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I was listening to the country and western last night. Just got moved by the spirit. <laughs> That one away. <laughs> oh, I might need it a little later on. I mean, I got about five more checks to pick up here, so I better hold off. Well, first of all, thanks everybody for coming. What a turnout! It's gonna be at least two percent of the whole company. <laughs> And what's the deal with the five pound kitty in the cake? Come on. That's Rob, Rob's problem. Yeah, yeah, he, he showed me the Amorex they sent over and they gave us a five pound man. kitty. Okay, uh, 30, 37 years, two months, at the end of the month. That's a long time, and I never thought I'd work at one place that long. Uh, what do you do for 37 years? Uh, I've gone through about seven trucks. Four of them new, so thanks uh, to John for that, and, and uh, Dave for equipping us well. I've been at four different locations, 206 North Washington for a blink of an eye, and then we went to 1313 Glenwood. Yeah. Yes, exactly, <laughs> I remember that. 1401G <coughs> West River Road, and now where we're at now, so. <laughs> it's so a lot of different locations. I've um, uh, seen a lot of people come and go. Some I was pretty sad to see go in the course of time, leave the company or retired or whatever. Some I just kind of wonder why they didn't get going sooner. But you know, not too many of them. 37 years of production, that's a long time to dance around with girls in the red dress. Um, what do you do for 37 years? Well, I kind of figured it out. And I actually got the notes right there if you want to check it out. But I've sold $1.1 million of new equipment. Yeah, seriously. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. $5.3 million, give or take, in service work over the years. So add that together, and that's... Uh, Six million dollars. Remember in 1974 to 1978, all you old guys, bionic man, and six million dollar man, and would eight. Hey. Look at that. Huh? So I guess I've accomplished something. We got the technology. We can do it, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> the next category is oops. In the course of time, 
when you punch up tags, at the end of the month you realize, hey, it's December 1st and I've got 20 tags from November. What am I gonna do with them? They'll throw them away. So for 30, <laughs> sorry about that, oops. So I figured, <clears throat> Conservatively, I probably have thrown away about 7,000 tags <laughs> that I can't use anymore because they're dated. So that's about seven cases. I don't know what's a case. Who's the, who's the buyer on? Danielle, how much is a case of tags worth? Good question. I got a tag here. Where are they? One of the. Uh, Bandit boss, is he here? No, okay, he, he got this tag for me. It's one of the earliest tags. August 1981. Anybody born after August 1981? This tag is older than you. <laughs> I got a beat by like five months. Yeah. I got another one here. That's uh, May 19th, 1966 from J.N. Johnson. Very cool. Yeah. I actually have an older one, but I can't find it. Old guys lose things. I could be. Maybe that's it from April 19, uh, 1956, I think it was. Yeah, I was going to give it to Dave. Maybe I should give it to Jack. I don't know. No, I, I want the Marine Corps, 66. 66. Well, this tag, ironically, I was servicing a building downtown, and it was in April. And I walked around the corner, and I'm looking, and I says, yeah, there's a fire hose there. And I saw a tag, and I pulled it off, and here was a tag from 1956. Now this was, this was like 2001, in April. So we hadn't changed that service month in all those years. So it's kind of interesting <laughs> thought. Kind of glad you're not doing this building. You bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I can't even read my own writing now. Oh yeah, in the course of time, uh, we gotta make uh, cold calls. Uh, of course, when we're on, back in the day, we are on commission, now I'm on a, so it's a whole lot different now. But anyway, I'm making this cold call, I don't know, some insurance company south of the river. <clears throat> and I pull into the parking lot, I walk in, the guy says, nah, you know, so I think, okay, I'm out of here. And I pull out, but I cut it too short, and I yanked the bump bumper off of this beat-up piece of junk Toyota. <laughs> so what am I gonna do now? So I wrote my name, live my business card, and your dad had to pay for that. Sorry. Well, I mean, dumb things happen, you know, trying to make a cold call to drum up new customers. But then there was a time again. I was in Bloomington, and I walk into this building, and I'm thinking to myself, "Oh, it's a nice place." So, walk in and the receptionist wasn't there and I'm standing around and she's not coming and I turn around and I looked and I saw these footprints following me. And I remembered, I just came from a foundry. If you know anything about a foundry, they got a sooty mess. So I just kind of backed out of there. <laughs> I don't know who it is, but they had a carpet to clean. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Sorry about that. Um, I've always worked with a good group of guys. Terry Johansson just left here. He worked with JM for a while and left the late 80s. And Jack's here. I was Mr. Jack, the character, the soft spoken, doesn't talk his mind, Jack. At any rate, I've worked with a good group of guys and the great, I mean, so keep it up, guys. You got a good job, you got a good opportunity. Um, I remember where we've been, you know. Let's keep up the good work. I started in November of 1979. At the time, yeah, there were 12 of us. And uh, by LBC's inception, we had worked our way up to 15, plus two LBC guys. And now, where are we at? Okay. 170? So tenfold. Tenfold. And, um, I don't know what the production was back in the day there, uh, 1979 rules for the company, but now we're what, plus 30 million probably? Almost. Yeah. So that's, that's 
tells you there's a lot of hard work there. So, so keep at it. Keep at it, guys. You know, when I first started in 1981, my first school year, I had 504 service calls to make, assigned annuals. By 1985, I had worked it way up to 807. So in four years, I had added 300 accounts, and that's a lot of cold call. So uh, I think my record was nine in one day, Southdale. I went scurrying over there, and I bet you Andy is probably still servicing some of that stuff. Yeah. Where's the payback, right? Yeah. <laughs> and now, just imagine, in 1981, I sell a 10-pound fire extinguisher, and I service it every year, and then every six years, I gotta do a six-year maintenance, and then I do a hydrostatic test, and so on. So, if that outfit bought that fire extinguisher, it cost them, in 37 years, $450 for that one extinguisher. That tells you little things count. Don't miss things, all right? My think of that was probably, at least on the old commission basis, about a hundred and a quarter. So that ain't too bad. More than that. I guess. A third, come on. <laughs> now there's the sale. I think we were selling a 10 pounder for about 44, $45, and now it's 130. So there's inflation for you. So, uh, I guess thank you. Thank you to a lot of people. John Goodwin, who, your dad, is not here anymore, but uh, he took a chance on me. I appreciate it very much. The Institute of Profit Sharing, hey, that's, that's helped a lot of guys. Uh, by the time LBC came around, uh, you guys know most of you here LBC. So you know what it is. Dick, Dan, Bob, Jerry, where are you at, Jerry? There you are, thanks. I've uh, seen you guys come. So, uh, I want to appreciate that. Thank, thanks, John, for, for taking a chance on me and, and uh, making it go. Roger Schultz, uh, Rob's predecessor, service manager for several years, uh, mentor, and uh, I appreciated him. Dave, Rob, you guys took over the reins after John decided to bow out. You kept her going. Well, now things are different. LBC is in charge. So, so that's good. That's good. The LBC crew, uh, know your legacy. You already know this. It goes really back to 1895. Not too many companies can say that. I mean, the wherewithal of JN was enabled LBC to be created, and look what you've done with it. So, great. Thank you. My wife and daughter are here, so the reason why I kept going <laughs> Should I tell them the kept it going story? Uh, yeah, we're getting yeah, too yeah, long. Yeah. We took a vacation one time and we got lost in the cornfields. <laughs> so there's this old woman coming out and um, she was getting her mail. So he says, we're a little lost. How do we get back to the main highway? Oh, she says, well, she says, you, you just go up here and there'll be a turn to the left. Now you want to make a left turn, but then you keep it going. And then you come up, and there will be a turn, and then you want to make a right turn, and that's funny, and you keep it going. She did that about, everything was keep it going. <laughs> then she says, you'll come to a fork in the road, if, but you just keep going straight, because you keep it, because the fork was really coming from the side. She says, keep it going. As it turned out, all we had to do was just stay on the road, because there were hairpin turns around the cornfields, and we kept it going. So that's what you got to do, just keep it going. <laughs> she made it sound like it was turns, intersections. It was a curve in the road. Yeah. So we're, every time we're like, where's this turn? She's got a turn coming up. No, it was just curves just in the road. <laughs> so uh, again, thanks for coming. There's a, an interesting Bible Proverbs, Proverbs 20:29. Uh, 20, it says, the glory of young men is their strength. And the splendor of old men is their gray hair. Well, take this job and give it to somebody with less gray hair and a 32-inch waistline. <laughs> and uh, I guess it'll be fine. Thanks a lot. That's enough. Thank you, Gene. I had the pleasure of knowing Gene since 1987. And he 
we really didn't have interaction because I was just a little sales puke. But there's a couple people in the audience that I think have other stories that they'd like to talk about. And I think one of the people that should say something is Dave Goodman. Rob, you're next. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi, Dave. It's a little bittersweet here doing this <clears throat> get together with Gene. Obviously, I like my wish my father was could be here to give this to Gene, this this retirement party to him, or be here at least to uh, celebrate with him. And um, I, uh, you know, thank Gene for all the years of service he's given to us. I, you know, appreciate all his hard work. And I really wish he would uh, keep working. <laughs> but I know Gene needs to retire because he needs to enjoy the rest of his life with his beloved wife and kid, his daughter. So I want to uh, say thank you, Gene, for everything you've done. And um, I wish uh, you know you all the best in the future. And uh, don't, don't be shy and stop by and tell us what we're doing right or wrong. <laughs> Probably more wrong than right. But uh, yeah, I really, it was one, I'll tell one quick story. I was up at a nursing home in North Minneapolis one time with Gene. He was, uh, I was, he was trying to sell the customer on some service. And I tell you what, I was very impressed with his ability to explain to the customer what he really needed to be done, how it needed to be done, and uh, all of that. It was very impressive. So he's a great person to learn from about how you do your sales work. Um, and I was hoping that Lynn would be here by now, but she's not. Hopefully she, she's supposed to stop by here too. So I uh, wish you the best and I hope uh, things go well for you in the future. And Dave Daly had a 28 page of speech and I talked to myself <laughs> because hold it down to like 15 minutes tops. Thank you. <laughs> all right, 15 minutes, that's all I got. I'm not used to microphones. A little closer. How's that? Are you all here right now? <laughs> okay. Uh, Gene, wow. Uh, 15 years that I've been here, uh, and you've been here uh, double that plus, and then some. Um, thanks, Gene. You know, what can I say? Uh, I took over for Roger. You would have been here for quite a few years before that, and uh, uh, you know, always looked up to you. Uh, there's plenty of conversations that we had, and uh, sometimes a lot of those ideas that have been floated out about this guy was responsible for quite a few of those. Uh, always had ideas, no matter what. Gene would always come in, and just the other day he comes in. Hey, I got an idea. Let me sit down. I'm gonna tell you this, and. Uh, you know, that's one thing I love about Gene, is he's always full of ideas, good ideas, uh, always on top of things, always reliable, dependable. Um, you know, the, how many new trucks do you say you had? Seven? Seven. Seven Four new dope. trucks. And about a week after that, every one of them looked like it was already an old truck. <laughs> As I know, I clean it out with a shovel. Oh. <laughs> That'll probably be your last week, yeah, you'll just yeah. be cleaning out your truck. So. Yeah. <laughs> once but, every uh, 37 years, whether it needs it or not. There you go. Once, once every 37 years. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's it's it is bittersweet, as David said. Uh, uh, I know Gene, you've talked about coming back working part time. Hopefully, you do that. Uh, you know, because uh, really could use your uh, ingenuity that you have. You always have, like I say, a lot of good ideas and uh, thinking about things. Also, I ran up the numbers quick on 7,000 tags. I figure it's probably uh, probably about twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> so uh, Oops. maybe we'll take that out of the last year. <laughs> right on. So no, Gene. Again, thanks. Uh, you know, and, and I'd encourage anybody else that would like to come up and just say a few words about Gene, especially those that worked quite a while with him. Um, oh and, no. Uh, <laughs> Okay, hang on, before Jack gets up here. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumping ahead on the itinerary, so hold on for a few minutes. So. He's just going for a beer. Oh yeah, Gene, that's something we're gonna have to figure out. Who's gonna who's gonna take your spot and be in walking in a minute or two late in the meeting? See, just rotate it. Just rotate it. 
Well, uh, Gene, can't thank, can't, really can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it, and uh, hopefully we can keep in touch afterwards, and uh, they keep the door open to at least uh, check in. So, I'll see. Thank you very much. I know Jack wants to say something, and I've heard Jack talk, and this can take a really long time. Uh -huh. And I've heard Westbrook talk, and he takes less time, so I'm going to have Dan talk first. <laughs> Remember, you asked Dan first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> VPs before. Well, there isn't a lot of people here that were here when I first met Mr. Lake. And, uh, you know, I, Gene was always happy. And he came into my office. He'd always come into my office after I came in the shop. And he'd say, what do you think about this? And give me some ideas. And Gene, Gene's a great man. And uh, in 1987, I had this big announcement. I was so happy because I bought my first cabin. And I was bragging about my cabin. And then uh, Gene comes into my office and says, well, where did you buy this? I said, well, I bought it in McGregor. He says, well, that's where all my whole family's from. And I had happened to meet his uh, uncle. And his uncle, he said, when a lake takes a job, they get it done. So my father-in-law hired him to cut down a tree. And Freddie was not a young man. Freddie was probably 85 years old at the time. And he comes over. And he looks up at this tree, and it's a big tree, and I'm looking at my father-in-law, I'm going, I don't know. I said, but you know what, I know I know his nephew. So if, if they work the same, this would be a good thing. Well, old Freddie went back into his truck, and he kind of shuffled. And he looks down, and he picks up a crescent wrench. And then he gets a string. And he looks up at the tree, and he starts throwing this crescent wrench over this branch. Well, it doesn't go very well, so he started about 8 o'clock in the morning. And he stayed out there, it was noon, brought him out a glass of water. 2 o'clock, it went over there. And old Freddie looked at it, and he goes, hmm. He shuffles over to his truck, and he had an old hand winch in there. And he hand winches up the, 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 the end of the, the hook, hooks are on there, and he cranks it tight. And old Freddie goes over and he gets his chainsaw out. That's an hour's worth of time in Freddie's world. <laughs> he cuts her down and that Fred. tree fell exactly where Fred thought it'd go. And I was looking at my father-in-law and I thought, wow, I thought we are going to build a new house out of this deal. <laughs> Freddie cut it all up. He said, can I have the wood? If I take the wood, it's 75 bucks for this job. And I go, you can have the wood. <laughs> But anyway, Gene, Gene, Gene's told me a few stories and some good things, and like I said, I was proud I bought my cabin, and Gene always looks at me at the end of the day, and he says, Dan, I'm going home to the lake home. <laughs> so good luck in your future. Have some great travels. Enjoy yourself. You're a good man. Thank you. For anybody that doesn't know Jack, you're in for a treat. Jack is uh, Jane Johnson's uh, Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> so um, uh, hold on to your hat, hold on to your seats, and here's Jack. Thank you there, Mr. Head Vandal. Head Vandal. Head Hello, Vandals. Hello. Last shot to call you that. You new LBC people, don't worry about it. You don't get to joke. <laughs> There was a time when these people hired thieves. <laughs> it was my job to guard the damn shop to keep them bastards out of that lockup. <laughs> That's why I call them vandals. But they fire every damn one of them. And I still call them vandals just because I feel like it. But you there is not been a legitimate vandal. Oh my God, 15 years a long time. But there was. Anyway, Gene, I've always admired you. Your integrity, your honesty. I've met damn few people like you in my life. But the one thing that impresses me more than everything else in the world is that both you and me went to Marine Corps, went to Vietnam, I'm the only one who swears like a son of a bitch. You never did. <laughs> That's probably a land speed record for Jack. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> In closing, Gene, I just want to say the mark of a man is how he handles his personal life 
in his professional life. And a, a person of faith and a person of stature and a person of integrity understands the value of his family, he understands the necessity for work, and he never gets those two mixed up. And he continues on in his life, and that man will live his life a happy man and die a well-respected and happy man. And I've got a lot of respect for you, and, I, and you epitomize that type of person. So congratulations on 37 years. Thank you for all your service. Best of luck to you in your future, and we will miss you, buddy. Thank you. Can I say something? What's that? Can I say something? Sure. We got one more speech here. Do we? Hand out. Oh, okay. The daughter wants to do a speech. I was thinking about saying something too, but okay. I'll, I'll see what she has to say. <laughs> she might hear what I would say. I'm Jean's daughter. I can't believe he's as old as he is. <laughs> because I still feel pretty young. But I was born in 81, so longer than I've been alive, he's been working for Jan. And he taught me to look at the fire extinguisher in every place I went. See if, uh, if it was on time, if it was yours. And uh, every time I heard of somebody having a fire extinguisher go off or whatever happened, I'm like, damn, go over there. So that was really something he taught me, which I thought was kind of silly for some, you know, 10 year old girl to be looking at the fire extinguishers. But, and uh, I just want to say I really appreciate the job too that my dad had and that he was given because, you know, my mom, had a lot of illness and having a steady job with steady insurance and everything like that has been something that has made us have a stable family life. You know, there's so many people who don't have that for unexpected health reasons. So I know I really appreciate it and I think my mom and dad both do. And so um, I love my dad and I love going to the shop. It feels like my little home. I thought I was the coolest thing strutting around there when I was a kid. I remember the one on West River Road, and sometimes I'd wear one of my dad's shirts. And I just thought that was really Valley cool. Valley Fair? No, we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, I, I don't know, you're not, you're not actually there. done yet. Once you're on the way to. But anyways, thanks very much for everybody coming. I appreciate that, and showing my dad the appreciation, because he's, he's a great guy. And uh, it was really nice to see Jack again. So thank you very much. You don't have to. Sure.